The Orange Zone, sponsored by Billy Whitaker Cars and Trucks. What's up, what's up? Welcome into the Orange Zone Podcast, the award-winning Orange Zone Podcast. A reminder, you can find every episode, Spotify, Apple, wherever you want to listen. You can also find every episode on our Orange Zone YouTube page. What's up from the Skycam? Make sure you're liking, commenting, and subscribing. Also, be sure to follow us on our new Instagram and TikTok page for more content. We appreciate everyone buying in um, on our channel and what we're building here, so thank you. I'm Tommy Sladak. We have Samantha Croston. We have Lawrence Moten. We have Rachel Culver. We have the full crew to talk about Syracuse men's basketball today, a loss to Boston College. They had a win over North Carolina State. And guys, there is one f- f- phrase for me that explains this whole team right now in ACC play, and that is consistently inconsistent. Mm. You go down their ACC standings, and it is loss, win, loss, win, 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 loss, win, loss. I think I just nailed that off the top of my head. <laughs> but the, the point is there. And that's what stands out to me. I'm going to ask you guys what stands out to you right now. What are you thinking of? Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, I loved what you said. I saw that tweet, and I was like, wow, that is actually a great way to put it because it's so true. What's standing out to me right now is free throws and the issues that continuously come up there. Yes. And what stands out to me is the fact that they – let Boston College go on a 21 to nothing run. So those are the two things that in my mind, we'll get into it more, but if you ask me right off the top of my head, it's hashtag free throws matter, and it's stop the run before it gets to 21 points. Over to Moten. Yeah, oh man, that's, I don't know what to call this. Uh, Unpredictable. I'm gonna go with unpredictable. Like you guys said, Tom, you just wrote that, uh, said what the uh, win loss, streak was with these guys you don't know which team is going to come play yeah and um great way to put it. i just don't uh i don't appreciate the fight either you know like i said some games they're fighting in north carolina state you know if we, if we want to backtrack a little bit they fought they really fought that game and you can see with the, the, the defense and the ball pressure and everything and then last night was just was unacceptable to me being being as though these are the games that you're supposed to win and uh, we didn't get that tight, that, that win, and I, that hurt us a little bit. And I, you know, I also put out there that 15 and 6 sounds a lot cooler than 14 and 7. Yes. It really does. Yes. Sometimes there's just numbers that stand out. So, mm-hmm. you know, Syracuse moves to 14 and 7, 5 and 5. And yeah, that's, it perfectly explains how they are right now, right at 500. And Lawrence, you mentioned the, the fight there. And I, I appreciated the fight that happened in the second half. It happened too late Mm -hmm. because there was that 21-point run. And to me, this team, they don't have good poker faces. Because when they're frustrated and they're feeling down, boy, do they wear it. You can see it. And your teammates are seeing that. Mm -hmm. Your whole – everyone's picking up on your energy. And end of the day, everyone's their own person. They're their own personality. But there's certain times, man – and, and a part of it is is Division One college basketball, where I think you need to. I think there needs to be a little bit more of a adult, you know, just a little bit more of a maturity and understanding the energy that you're giving off to your teammates can be picked up by everyone else. I would like to actually ask a question because I just feel like it'd be an interesting time in the season to talk about this specifically for Moten, but I want to hear what you would think too. For Syracuse men's basketball, what would be? Forget about their record right now. But what would be an outcome at the end of the season that you would feel happy about? You would feel like this is the standard. Mm. Well, everything's new, of course, with even with Adrian as the coach. He has to learn his coaching style. Uh, The team has to learn how to adjust to uh, his ways as a coach. But, um, you know, that has nothing to do with um, grit and, and fight and attitude. You can have bad games. But you still have to fight. And I'm not seeing that, Sam, uh, in certain games, it's particularly last night. You know, it's just we get lackluster and guys uh, just, I call it suave, going through the motions and not really giving that energy. And you can see the difference. And I, I totally saw the difference from the North Carolina State game to the game last night. And, and that's just, you know, it's like I call it fake swag. Fake swag. Fake swag. Fake swag. Yeah. And you know who has real swag? You. I'm loving that sweatshirt. Thank you. I just had to say it. That is is like a distractingly cool sweatshirt. We are one clothing line, my buddy. Uh, 
Kenny Westray. He's had this store for 30 years. Show hold up, up, we a hold up yeah, the hold sun up a little bit. so they can see it. No, no, right. Yeah, at this camera's oh, good. Just this up camera. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah there we go. Yeah, see, we Isn't that cool? One. That is really Because neat. at the end of the day, we all won. Yeah, and I have a certain purchase that is in the mail right now. Ah. I'm going to be surprising you guys ah. with next week. Ah. Moten knows what I'm talking about. I'm I saying don't. It, I know, and that's the whole point. Yeah. You and the viewers, you and our orange zone team, you know, family here, going to have to find out and see. I'm excited. But I'm excited about it too. So anyway, Boston College, they shoot 30 for 50 from the field. <laughs> The Eagles go 60%. They're 10 for 20 from three-point range. And I believe we've had games this year where, you know, the, the opposing team shoots lights out, and it's just kind of like, well, I mean, I don't know what else to do there. They were just making shots. Last night didn't feel like that to me. Last night felt like there was a serious gap with this defense being able to close out where, you know, a part, a big part of their story of their offensive success was Syracuse's defensive failures. And Moten sort of touched on this, but at some point, it listen, at the end of the day, basketball, to an extent, is a game of runs right. and a game of highs and a game of lows. But to allow someone to go on a 21-point run, that's where, to your point, that is about heart. Absolutely. That is about grit. That's about the things that are not on the stat sheet. There is, I would say, if they're in that situation 10 times, just one time is Boston College going on a 21-point run. Right. That's yeah. not something that you're normally seeing. You know what I mean? I do. I do, Sam. It's definitely not something you, that you normally see. Um, 30 for 50 from the field, 10 for 20 from the three-point line. You know, I was always a guy that says, you know, I'm going to use two of my fouls. Sometimes you have to be aggressive and a little dirty to get these guys out of routine, mm. you, know, you know. And, I mean, that's the way I was taught and that's the way I, I played the game. You know, I wasn't a dirty player, but I used my foul and you were going to know that I fouled you, you know, and, and because that was out of effort right. and not wanting you to beat me. So just little things like that, you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm really pissed off, guys. You know, because this is a game that we, I really truly feel like we should have won. You know, started off with a lot of energy. I think we went up seven or eight points at one point. Yeah, it and was it, 18 or 11. Yeah, it, look, it looked like we were on pace to have a solid, uh, solid victory. But, you know, as you can see, you know, when you're playing on the road, that's another thing. When you're playing on the road, you have to give it even more extra effort, you know, because you're going against, of course, your opponent, but the fans and everybody else. So, I just didn't see that last night, and you know, it was a, guys didn't play to the to the way I thought they should have. And it just goes to show you, like how much that twenty-one point run hurt them, because you know, Rachel in her notes here has that they SU still shot forty-seven percent from the floor right. on most right. nights. We're we're like okay, yep, and they and, forced twenty-one turnovers. Like, yes, and you know. and. <laughs> These are good numbers, right? Right. right. But right. it just goes to show you how much that run crushed them, and then the free throws, seven for fourteen, man. Yeah. Like that's right there. Yeah. Right there, yeah. you could say that changes the game completely. Um, you know, it was funny coming into this. I had people, you know, not from the Syracuse area that are, you know, in the in the sports gambling world, say, "Why is Boston College a four and a half point spread?" They're like, is that weird to you? And I'm right. like, that is weird. Right, right. That I'm like, I know Syracuse is away, but you know, Boston College, it's it's not a super hard atmosphere to be in. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a lot of Cuse fans there. I was surprised by that. And for Boston College to win by five, man, phew, yeah. Vegas. Yeah. I don't know how they do it, yeah. but they know. Vegas. <laughs> they really do. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. always yeah. know. Yeah. It's, it's so freaky. upsetting. It's it is freaky. so it is so weird. It really is. Yeah. But that's it. That is the thing. It's like this is the sort of game where you, I'm sure if you're one of the players on this team, you really do feel upset, hopefully in a positive way, in a way that inspires you in the games going ahead, because it did. It felt like they controlled a lot of this game. Yes. That's the upsetting part, is like, how do you control 75% of this game, but then the outcome still isn't what you want it to be? And that's what matters at the end of the day. Did you win the game or did you lose it? And they lost it. And it was a game that I don't think they should have lost. And it's a game that I think eight times out of 10, they wouldn't lose. Mm -hmm. But but they did, and now it's a matter of, okay, how are we going to move forward? What things need to be fixed? And I feel like it's important to point out, to your point, it wasn't all bad. I no. mean, you look at, at the backcourt, that's something we've been talking about for a few weeks in a row now, and 
They combined for 36 points. Malik Brown, all over the stat sheet, 15 points, seven rebounds, two assists, one block, two steals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, I think some people individually had a nice performance, but it's a matter of collectively putting it together and certainly better defense. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel, what, what sticks out to you? I know you, you put a lot down here, and I like all the numbers. Make the numbers make sense. <laughs> I can't make the numbers make sense. <laughs> I am not Vegas, unfortunately. <laughs> but I, I – can I be brutally honest? Yes. <laughs> okay. That's what we're here for. You talk – your line was what? Consistently inconsistent, Tommy? Yeah. That's just kind of how Syracuse basketball is starting to feel, like, overall, unfortunately. Like, year after year, it kind of feels like it's the same story, and it's just you want you want someone to break that tune, and you want it to someone to – some team to step up and kind of take away that connotation for what this basketball program has become. And I do have the patience. I know Red's in his first year, but uh, speak, like Conte Forum is like a place where you should go in and win. Like that's, yes. I don't know, that's like, that's yeah. what I think of when you go to Boston College. Like that's not an intimidating atmosphere. Like you said, that's a that's an arena that's going to be filled with Q's fans. And it's just, I don't know, it's upsetting. Even as someone who's not, religiously accused fan like you want to see this team do well heck yeah yeah and, and, and also um to her point what people need to understand is you know like um this is adrian's first year too so yes. i think at times uh he could have made an adjustment i thought we should have pressed a little bit earlier in the second half we kind of waited till we got down about 14 15 with about five minutes left that's too late Jump on them at about eight minutes, mm -hmm. you know, throw the press mm -hmm. on them about eight minutes. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm definitely not feeling the, um, the whole feel of, of, of Syracuse basketball now. And I love them because, of course, you know, I bleed orange. But the whole feel is, are we going to make the tournament? Mm -hmm. You know, I wish we make the – I never felt like that. We knew we were going to make the tournament. Mm -hmm. It was a guarantee that we were going to make the tournament. Now we're wishing every year, are we going to even be in? And we got to hopefully, you know, Adrian changes that and, and the guys play a little bit harder and we can get that back on track as far as we know we're going to make the tournament yeah. instead of wishing we're going to make the tournament. The discussion should be how far are we going to make it, not if we're going to make That's it. That's what I'm used to hearing. And 100%. I mean, grow, growing up for me, you know, I, I follow Villanova real closely, mm -hmm. you know, being down in the Philly area. Obviously, Temple knows too, but the Big East was my – I love the Big East. And, you know, that was the thing, especially for Syracuse, mm -hmm. is it was where are they going to be? Yep. How far are they going to go? Mm, are they going to be a one this year? Right. And that to, – to step away so far from that, yeah. it's kind of like it really makes you take a step back yeah. and be like, how, how did yeah. this happen? But yeah. end of the day, this is a first-year head coach. Mm -hmm. There's adjustments that he is learning and making on the fly. Mm -hmm. And end of the day, most first-year coaches are not going to be 14-7, and seven, right? Mm -hmm. I agree. But because he's someone that's been within this system, he knows these players. He's been with – however long they've been at Syracuse, he's been a part of their story. You almost do have some higher expectations. Um, but ultimately, this is a fan base that expects good basketball. Absolutely. And and getting back to the tournament yearly is the, is should be the calling, case. Calling back to just like what's happening on the court, I've like I don't know if this is something you guys noticed too, but like it kind of feels like whenever things start to go wrong, we like are ultimately resorting back to that two three zone, which is an interesting thing. Um, I think it's not coming as a surprise to many teams, and it's like it's being implemented and put into situations in the game when you want to kind of throw off the offense. And it's something that's just allowing three-point shots. I mean, you look at what Boston College did from the line, the three-point line today and yesterday, and it's just, I don't know. I think that's an interesting point as well, that, like, there was kind of that um, – he had – Red had that line where he was like, we're not going to just be the 2-3 team anymore. That's not it. But it kind of feels like when things kind of start to shake a little bit, that's what ends up happening. Yeah. And also, the difference from good teams and average teams or bad teams is, you know, you you know when you're going to win. Like, we, we, we're still in the air as far as what type of team do we have, uh, who's going to play well, who's not going to play well. It's like good teams know what they're going to do. And you can't play to the caliber of the team. If it's a sorry team, we play sorry. 
You can't play sorry. Mm. If it's a sorry team, you got to play good. Mm -hmm. Get them out of early. But we seem to, this team seems to play to the style of the team we're playing against and not Boston College, like I said, they're not that good. Let's keep it real. And we were playing like Boston College. Yeah. I think that a, a part of that also, you wonder, um, I think that this team has still not truly established its identity, which is sort of why against any team, they're sort of just shaping whatever they're going to do based on the identity of the other team. And Tommy, to your point, it is like you do have to have a certain level of patience knowing that Red is in his first year, but people who have been around here in this area for a while or, or who have followed this program for a while know what Syracuse men's basketball was at its best. Right. So, of course, people are always going to wanting to be getting back to that, which is why I asked you what your standard or what you'd be happy with for this year would really be. You know, like, is getting into the tournament enough considering that there has been an overhaul and there's a new coach and there's a new style or is that is that not enough yeah yeah getting into the tournament sam would be fabulous absolutely it would be a step up the ladder from where we've been the the, the past couple of years and um i, I don't want to go back to it and i don't want to make it seem like it's not a good thing i don't agree with it but the portal has changed everything it's it's, it's i mean just the whole sport um guys are not together for four years anymore um you might have a teammate a different teammate next year <laughs> this whole syracuse team might some guys might be different coming in so it's it, it, when it comes to loyalty and tradition and all that stuff is out the door it still affects the portal still affects these guys that are playing now because you don't know who you're going to play against you know you don't know who you're going to play with so you can't you're not giving it that all. You're all because you really don't know the guy like you think you know him. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah. And end of the day, it's not changing, right? Yeah, and it's, it's, and not, it's changing. not changing. And, and so changing. The, the, it's up to you know, these coaches in these mm -hmm. schools now to say, how do we find success in what's the new norm? Yeah. Because what, what it once was isn't coming back. Yep. And to me, I think a, you know, a perfect example of it is just like Jay Wright. I didn't think Jay Wright was going to hang it up a few years ago. Not yeah. to bring a Villanova again. Yeah. Didn't really yeah. mean to do that. Yeah. But, you know, he did it. Mm -hmm. And he did it timing-wise right when things are shifting. Because yeah. he knew yes. the writing was on the wall. He's like, this is going to change how I do everything. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't think he wanted to do it. Yeah. And so if you're in this now and you're Adrian Autry, you're going to have to understand and know that there's going to be new pieces coming into play. How do we become the best at that? Even though it changes. Yes. And people don't like it. Mm -hmm. It's reality. It is. And it's up to them to figure out how we're going to make the most of it and become the Syracuse it once was. Absolutely. And within that reality, what I'm learning and what I'm seeing is the more and more your home games are very important. Huge. Mm -hmm. Huge. You have to win your home games now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is very important now with, with what's going on with the portal and everything and all this changes. Uh, you protect your home. You have a good chance of uh, uh, advancing. That's all I can say. Big time. I mean, I do because I do. I do agree with Moten in the sense that, like, I I see the positives and the negatives mm -hmm. to the portal, and I see why it happened because, mm -hmm. of course, you want athletes to be able to generate money, and it has like a little bit more of a business feel mm -hmm. now, the whole operation. But it sort of does take away, or it makes that aspect of culture mm -hmm. just a little bit harder. Yeah. Because even if you have a coach. Like, like, I feel like Fran Brown is a good example of somebody who I feel like really has his, you know, priorities in place and exactly what he wants to do and his culture is going to be what he wants it to be. But still, when you have people who are floating in and floating out, mm -hmm. you're not really building those friendships and developing mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. chemistry mm -hmm. the way that I feel like you used, you used to be able to do. Absolutely. And that matters on the court, the way that that all plays out. So it's sort of like, I think you have two questions as a coach in this new era. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do I... I make sure I'm doing everything I can to grab guys out of the portal and getting new talent in, but also maybe more importantly, what am I doing to retain the players who I already have? Mm -hmm. Cause I think that's really how you make a great team is by retaining the players who you already recruited and not losing them once they've already gotten good. Yeah. But there's a lot to that, you know, yeah. big time and understanding the style and the tradition of your university, you know, which is important too. You know, like I said, uh, 
I, I really feel that these guys now with this, this transfer portal, and it's not bad. I'm happy these guys are making money and all that, but it, there's no more loyalty. There's no more uh, challenging the next player that's beside you that's All-American also uh, because you're scared that he might get more time than you, so you're going to leave. So it's a lot of that going on too, when I, and I call it more spoiled. No, I'm happy. You, I'm yeah. honestly happy you brought that up yeah. because I've thought – I've thought a lot about that, yeah. like even just, just my experience being a goalie at Colgate, not starting to start out, mm -hmm. and like what that experience teaches you if you can get over that hump, yeah. if you can get that starting yeah. spot. Yeah. And then once you have it, having right. people beneath you like, all right, this person's challenging me, right. I better step up my game because right. I know there's competition right. that's awaiting me. Right. Like that's all good in the long run, you See, know? See, Sam, you, you had heart, Sam. I did. Somebody yeah. else would have been do. like, I'm gone. I want to go to another <laughs> school because I have Sam here and Sam ain't giving it up. <laughs> I'm never giving it up. But honestly, I wouldn't have learned that lesson unless mm -hmm. I was the person who was behind chasing the per the mm -hmm. starter to, to mm -hmm. begin with, right, you know? Right. Like that changes who you are as a person down the line. So I will say that is, I, I totally understand why the transfer portal exists. And I do think it's important that athletes are making their money mm -hmm. for the things that they bring to the university. Like mm -hmm. that was a long time coming. Mm -hmm. But I do agree that there's certain parts about it where it's like you 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 did like learn a lot just mm -hmm. by having to stick around and just mm -hmm. fight it out you know yeah yep. you got that dog in you don't you yes she does woof, woof. <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> <laughs> well coming up for this team is at wake forest this weekend and then home for louisville next week or in the middle of next week so you kind of have two different stories here Louisville's the basement, right? I, I think a lot of Syracuse fans can look around and be like, well, at least I'm not a Cardinal fan right now. Mm -hmm. It could be worse. Louisville's down there. They're 1-9 conference, 6-15 and 15 overall. Wake Forest is more towards the top half, and that's really Syracuse's at this point. Um, you know, Wake will kind of complete the, the top half of the ACC. They've played the tougher teams of this league so far. And Wake comes in at 13-6, and 5-3 and three overall. You know, they have a loss to NC State. We beat NC State. They also beat Virginia by 20. Virginia always seems to smoke us. Yeah. So this is one of those toss-up games. It would be a big opportunity for an away win. And if they if they pull that off and then Louisville at home, I think fans are going to be feeling good. But yes. as we know at this point, this team's identity is partially a roller coaster right now. Until we see a difference, we th that that's how we're going to label. Absolutely, Tom. You know, um, it is a roller coaster. And another thing you guys need to understand, uh, Wake Forest is 11-0 and at home. Mm. They haven't lost at home. Don't love that. That's not That's good. an unnerving stat. Exactly. Don't Thanks for bringing that, that to the table. I just wanted you guys to know that. I just wanted you guys to know that. So this is a very important game. And uh, we can get this one, like Tommy said, and, and, and hopefully get Villanova. I'm sorry. Uh, Louisville, Louisville, sorry I did that to yep, you guys. Louisville. Um, everything will be hopefully a little bit back on track. But uh, this is going to be a tough game. I didn't know Wake Forest was that good. Yeah, they're a sneaky team. Yeah. They're one of those they're the past few good. years sneaky where it's like, good. okay, are they yeah. down here? Are they sneaky up there? Good. Sneaky good. So we'll find out. They, they've been putting out, turning out some NBA players too. Look out for them. Yeah. So let's flip to the next page because we do have the Culver byline. We have what are quadrants, what decides them, what is their impact. So make sure you're checking that out this week. Rachel, that's coming out when? We're going to shoot for this weekend, so hopefully okay. around Saturday, So this weekend, Sunday. so cmycentral.com. Make sure you're following us on social media and everything. And once that's up, we'll look to put it in the bio of our videos this week. Now, it's trivia or is it is the headline. I'm going to let Rachel take this one away. Okay. So obviously we've done the trivia, but this, time, this, um, this week I wanted to switch things up a little bit. And okay. this has to do with quad one wins. We all know their importance going forward, especially in March. Quad one wins are never more important than they are in March. Why at the height of their value are they only ever half? It's kind of a riddle I have for you guys today. <sighs> Wait, is the question written down somewhere? Or is it you're just uh, saying I, I thought you were reading some poetry. I didn't, you know. <laughs> it did sound like poetry. She, she was like yeah, spinning was, some bars yeah, for yeah, a minute heard there. It. Coming, coming, from, it, Sam. coming from you, poetry? Uh, I, Whoa. Hey, I heard it. I heard the it. Godfather. I heard it. I All right, Rachel, it. say that again. Let's, yeah. let's tap One more in. Time. One more time. Quad one wins are never more important than in the month of March. Why, at the height of their value, are they only ever half? What, the height of their value, they only ever half. 
I don't even know what that means. Mm. All right. I'm not going to let us sit in silence here. So I will kind of lead you in the right direction. Think okay. about how many, how many teams are in the March Madness field? 68. 68. How many f- teams are in the March Madness field after playing games? 64. Okay. Wait. 30, yeah. is it th- oh, okay. I thought it was 32. Cause one, it was one, at 30. Yeah, when, you a, lose, when you lose, it's down to 32. Yeah. Right? Are the playing games, are we considering those the two games before it yeah, starts? Yeah, the two games. The, okay. The okay, so 64. Yep. All right. So, obviously, one way to get into the tournament is with a really good resume. Is there any other ways to get into the tournament? Oh. Conference yes, championship? Yes, win the tournament. Yeah. So, at the height of their value, quad wins are only ever half. That's because it only applies to half of the field. Oh, okay. very good. Dang. She tried. She tried to riddle it out. I, yeah, I see yeah. now. That was cool. That was cool. <laughs> that was cool. Yep. Always on the table too. Yep. Always, always on the table. Always on the table. Mm-hmm. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Mm. You need it, real quick before we go. Maybe the most under discussed, under talked about. Syracuse basketball heartbreaker in arguably the last 20 years or that I know of is Syracuse losing to Wake Forest in the ACC tournament last year on that buzzer beater because right after was Jim Beheim announcing his retirement and it completely buried how insane that finish was. <laughs> it yeah. really did. Yeah. Totally buried it. Like it's never talked about, but that was an <laughs> insane, insane game, an insane play, and boom. I don't even think I showed that shot that night. Now, Buddy was on that team. No, this is just last year. Okay, so, so this I'm was about the year before. This was because I just remember Buddy. My last memories of Buddy. Yeah. What's up, Buddy? My guy. But my last memories of Buddy is punching the guy. Oh yeah, that's Florida how he, State. That's how he went out. Yeah. And that was kind of ugly too. That was tough, man. Yeah. That was ACC yeah. tournament, yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah. Punches. Um, oh, I forget who it was. Yeah. But they do. It was all cool afterwards. But he just. It, it was such a wild, bad uncharacteristic way to, Bad way to moment. go. Yeah, uncharacteristic. Great call. <sighs> Brutal. Yes. And they crushed that team. Yes. They crushed them. And I think they were going to probably go farther. Mm-hmm. But it ended up being, you know, it was, uh, it was poetic that Jimmy ended up having his best game in orange uniform, mm-hmm. stepping in place of his mm-hmm. brother against yeah. Duke. True. Because that was True. insane. I believe True. they were up True. on Duke at halftime. Yeah. Yep. Man. He yeah. punched Wyatt Wilkes. Wyatt All Wilkes. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah, that was, a, that was the <laughs> longest day of my life. <laughs> it was a noon game, and I thought it was going to be normal, you know, get post game, do some stuff, 6 o'clock, you know, go out for a nice dinner in Brooklyn or Manhattan, and then the news came in, and then we were waiting on the verdict from the ACC. Right. So we were there till midnight. Yeah. yeah. But, I remember that. I sort of feel like I remember you reporting, like, oh, on yeah. all of that stuff. So Thank that, God the Barclays a, Center's got good food. I was going to say, that's a tough feeling when you feel like you're going to go out, spend the night in Brooklyn, work trips are awesome. Nah. <laughs> that's why poetry knows it. Being a fan, being a fan is great. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, man. All right. That's it. Any last thoughts? I just love consistently inconsistent. I think that's really all there is to say right now. And the only, it's not fun. It's not fun, but it's true. Mm-hmm. The only way to break out of that Provide a little bit of consistency, and I think that does. It comes from the heart, and it comes from the hustle and finding their identity. Boom. Yeah. Um, give Wake Forest their first loss at home. There we go. There that, we go. That'll be good, you know, and for all the f- people that love Syracuse sports and fans, um, we're doing a meet and greet down at Shaughnessy's uh, under the Marriott and uh, at the watch party. Where it's just pretty much a uh, basketball watch party, me – uh, Billy Owens, uh, Devendorf, John Wallace, uh, the Syracuse Eight, where we will be, where we will be talking about our legends gear, Syracuse legends nice. athletics gear. So, come support that and and come meet us if you haven't met us already. You'll be at the Winter Fair too. Did yes, I get that right? Doing the Winter Fair okay. this weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, looking forward to that and uh, looking forward to seeing some of my fans. Plug our boy. Go see him. Yep. He's the legend right here. Go see, go see poetry. All right, man. We're out of here. Lawrence Moten, Samantha Cross, and Rachel Culver. I'm Tommy Sladek. We're out of here. Peace. Peace.